Hello, welcome to the harbor. Um, we're going to worship together.
Good evening, Harbor. My name is Kevin, and I work alongside Brian here at the Youth Center. Um, and I just want to give you guys a couple ways to stay connected with us in this time of separation. First and foremost is that you can connect with us on Instagram at We Are the Harbor to get updates on ministry and ways to, and special events that we're doing for you to stay involved with your community. The second way is if you wanted to get a hold of any of the teachings that we've done over the past year, from uh, a life that invites to controversial Jesus to to old dead guys to the I Am series and the series that we're starting today. Um, you can find that on Spotify at the Harbor Audio Teaching Podcast. Uh, and the third thing that I wanted to give you guys a, a heads up about is um, if you want to get connected with our cur current community groups that we have going on, just send us a DM and we would love to get you the information you need to get involved with your people. But like I said, my name's Kevin and uh, I'm stepping in for Brian as he is celebrating the birth of his son and spending time pouring into his wife and his son. Um, and so we're, we're the Harbor team, we're going to be working to continue providing services to you as we start the series in James called A Life According to James. A um, little bit of inf background information on the book of James. And scholars have widely accepted that the author of James is actually the half-brother of Jesus, written about the year 45 to 48 A.D., and it was written um, to the existing church at the time. And it's probably one of the oldest books in the New Testament. And it was written to existing church leaders um, and church members, encouraging them and challenging them to go deeper in their faith and grow in their relationship with God. And you, Now, I've heard people criticize the book of James as, as being a works-based faith, but that's not the heart of James at all. His heart is saying your faith is in God, but the depth of your faith can be grown through the works that you do. And that's what the book of James is going to be all about, and that's what we're going to be walking through together. But before we get started, let's spend a little bit of time in praying and getting before the Lord. If you would pray with me. God, thank you so much for who you are. Holy Spirit, it's your grace and your goodness that allows us to come into presence with you. So Holy Spirit, right now I ask that you would sit alongside every single person watching this service tonight. That you would be with them, that you would comfort them, that you would empower them and encourage them to lean into who you are and to learn what you would have them do, God. Give us eyes to see you and ears to hear you and a soft heart to receive your word. It's in your name that I pray, Jesus. Amen. All right, guys, so like I said, we're going to be going into the book of James. And we're going to be going into James chapter 1. So if you would, turn there with me and we'll, uh, we'll start off right at the beginning. And the first thing I want us to learn from the book of James is this, is that trials reveal our faith. And verse 2, it says this, that, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. Now I love you and I've given you a little dose of reality that Trials will come for those who follow Christ. It's a part of life. And James is encouraging us as believers to find joy in those trials. Because he says this, that the trials do not determine your faith, but they reveal the faith that you have. The way we handle trials are a direct reflection of the depth of our faith. I know for me, moments of, of weak faith happen, right? And one of the, the clearest moments that I can think of is, is early on in my marriage, my wife and I, we had a little tiny townhouse in Charleston, and we were just getting by. Times where we got our bills paid, there's a roof over our house, but I wasn't sure where groceries were going to come from. And, I, and I'm ashamed to say that my natural tendency was to panic. And be fearful, not remembering the promise of God that, that he is a good father who gives good gifts to his children. I see it's moments like that where, where I wasn't sure where the next meal was going to come from or where groceries were going to be that 
I let my fear overcome my faith. I didn't listen to the words of James encouraging the Christ follower to lean into who God says he is. But the cool thing is, is that I'm not where I need to be now. But my faith is stronger than where I was. And, and that's, that's what we're asked to do. Is recognize that where we're at right now, that's okay. But God is calling us into a deeper relationship with him. A stronger faith foundation in who he is and his promises. And he's asking us to step towards him. To work out our salvation. By doing the things that he says. One of my old youth leaders used to say this, that if you're not growing, you're dying. Another, another pastor I follow says that if, if you're not dead, God's not done with you. And there's great hope in that because God's depth is eternal. And so the more we take a step towards God, the more God reveals himself to us. And the more our faith grows, and the greater endurance we have to to walk through trials together. And you may be asking, all right, okay, great, Kevin, how can I help my faith grow? You see, it's the preparation that we do before the trials come that can help grow your faith. Hosea 6.3, the first part says that let us know, let us press on to know the Lord. It's an encouragement that Hosea is giving to the people of God saying, continue to press into who God is. Because that later in that verse it says that he's going to come to us like the rain, like the spring rain waters the earth. And I love that James 1.5 says it like this, that if you need wisdom, ask our generous God and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking, but when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver. For a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world, and they are unstable in everything they do. See, James brings forth this idea that, that we see a divided loyalty versus what the theologian philosopher G.K. Chesterton calls a fixed vision. And that's the thing about the enemy is that if, if, if the enemy can distract us enough to take our eyes off of Jesus, he knows that we are sinking in the ocean being tossed around like the wind by the wind and waves. But if we have a fixed vision on who God is and who God says he is and how he's going to come and meet us where we are and pull us out of those waves, if we have that fixed vision, then we can take any trial that the world throws at us. But see, Matthew 14 says it like this, that no one can serve two masters now, the theologian G.K. Chesterton says that as long as the vision of heaven is always changing, the vision of earth will be exactly the same. No idea will remain long enough to be realized or even partially realized. If you take your eyes off Jesus, then you've, you've taken your eyes off the solid foundation of your faith. And the beautiful thing about Jesus is that when you take your eyes off of him, he's waiting, the, he's waiting right there to pull you back. When you shift your vision, he's waiting for you to, to return to him, to return to that fixed vision so that he can bring you up into a greater understanding of who he is and who he has called you to be. But you've got to take the step towards him. Malachi 3.6 is the Lord speaking to the people, and he says that I am the Lord your God. I do not change so that you are not consumed. That's what God does. Everything he does is for the good of his people, for the good of you. Everything God does is to benefit you. So then you might be asking, well, if God's doing all this stuff, how do I fit in? That's a fair question. But I want to challenge you with this, that, that God has given you this faith, and God has given you the freedom to, to explore him and spend time with him. And I want to challenge you, don't treat your salvation like fire insurance. But rather, use the freedom that God has given you to grow deeper in your understanding of who he is. Verse 12 says like this, that God blesses those 
who patiently endure testing and temptation. See, afterward, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. See, we're called to remain in God, and in God's will, we can experience abundant life, just like Christ promises. In John 10, 10, it says, the thief's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy, but my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. Or we look to the inside from the psalmist. In in, in Psalm 16, verse 11, it says, you will make known to me the path of life. In your presence is the fullness of joy. In your right hand, there are pleasures forever. God wants to pour out blessing on you. And they come when you seek his presence. When you lean in to what God is wanting in your life, when you lean into growing in your understanding of who God is, God wants to pour out blessing. And the greatest blessing that God can pour out on your life is presence with him. And we see that uh, in, in James 16, it says this, uh, so do not be misled, my dear brothers and sisters. Whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God, our Father, who created the lights in the heavens. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. He chooses to give us birth to us by giving us his true word. And we, out of all creation, became his prized possession. You are God's prized possession. And he wants to pour himself out on you. Because it is in God that we get the fullness of life. The abundant life that is promised. He is a good father. Matthew 7, 11 says that if so you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give good gifts to those who ask him? He wants you to press into your relationship with God. God desires you to take a step towards him so that he can give you greater revelation and pour out greater blessing through his presence in your life. And that's, that's point number two for tonight is that revelation begs for action. Revelation begs for action. So the first point is that the trials reveal our faith. And it is that revelation of our faith that begs us to, to go deeper in our walk with who God is. It's begging you to take a step towards God. So is that what you're going to do? 21 says, like, verse 21 says it like this. So get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives. Humbly accept the word God has planted in your hearts, for it has the power to save your souls. But do not just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourself. Verse 21 explains that purity comes in humble pursuit of God. Isaiah 55, 8 through 9 says that my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways. For your thoughts are higher than my thoughts, and your ways higher than my ways. God's ways are so much better than anything you could ever do, than anything you could ever plan. Lean into him. The second part of that, Hosea 6.3, it says the spring rain will come. As we press on to know the Lord, his going forth as certain as the dawn, he's going to come to us like the rain, like the spring rain waters the earth. And for you Floridians, you don't really get what, what winter does or spring rain does. And I, it's, it's not your fault. But what spring rain is designed to do, it's supposed to wash away the cold, wash away the dirt, and wash away the, the, the muck that winter has built up. And spring rain calls forth new life to grow. That's exactly what is promised. That as we press on to know God, that he's going to come to us like the spring rain. That he's going to produce growth in our lives through our faith in him. Verse 22 echoes what Jesus taught in Matthew 7. In in verse 24, Jesus says that anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise. 26, but anyone who hears my teaching and does not obey is foolish. Don't just be a hearer of the word of God, but be a doer. You're going, okay, I get it, Kevin. How, How can I be a doer of God's word? 
I'm glad you asked. You guys are an astute audience, and I appreciate that about you. Verse 25 says this, but if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and do not forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. So what is that perfect law that sets us free? That's Jesus is the fulfillment of that law from Matthew 5. And he's the perfecter of our faith. Matthew 5, 17 says, Do not think that I came to abolish the law or the prophets. I did not come to abolish but to fulfill. Hebrews 12, 2 says like this, that look to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. John 1 says it like this, that in him was life, and life was the light of men. That light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Don't sleep on the blessing that God wants to pour out on your life. Your faith is not fire insurance. Salvation is not something to sit idle with. And wait for the second coming. That, That salvation is a springboard to action. And when you press into God, God pours his presence out in your life. That is the perfect, fullest life you can ever experience, his presence and a deep relationship with God. And that's what James is doing. James is begging the Christ follower to press into their faith. In verse 26, it says this, that if you claim to be religious but don't control your tongue, you are fooling yourself and your religion is worthless. Pure and genuine religion in the sight of God the Father means caring for orphans and widows in their distress, refusing to let the world corrupt you. So how how are you using this time to pursue God? Are you using this time to pursue God? As Christ followers, the book of James is, is encouraging you and challenging you to press in to who God is. Because when we press into who God is, God reveals himself. And pours his presence out in our life, which is the greatest blessing you could ever receive. So I, I just want to close our time with this. And remember that James is writing to Christ followers to help them grow in their faith and to walk deeper with God. Right? That the trials reveal our faith. And it's through that revelation that begs for action. So I want to leave you guys with this verse in Colossians. Chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, it says, Let the message about Christ in all its richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with a thankful heart. And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. Let's pray. God, help me not to be just a hearer of your word. Holy Spirit, let that revelation that trials produce, let that revelation call me into a deeper walk with you. I pray that you would allow us the opportunity to walk with you deeper, to know you more, to live out your life that you have designed for us. So God, give me the eyes to see and the ears to hear you and your will in my life. And I pray that prayer for my brothers and sisters watching right now, that you would give them eyes to see and ears to hear your heart for your people. So Holy Spirit, empower us, encourage us, and challenge us to lean into you. Because we lean into you, you reveal yourself to us. It's in your name that I pray, Jesus. Amen. Now, guys, right after this worship song, jump on to Instagram Live so we can just hang out and spend some time just talking with one another. Thank you so much for hanging with me tonight, and I am excited to see what God's going to do in the life according to James. Have a great week.